Welcome to the Loan Officer Team Training Podcast today. And today I have a very, very special guest. His name is Roberto Monaco, and he is with Influenceology. And I met Roberto through Carl White about 12, 13 years ago. And it was one of the best days of my life when I met Roberto. Roberto, I am so glad you're here with us. Thank you so much for being here and taking your time to be with Irene, us. Irene, thanks so much for the invitation. I want to give a virtual hug. <laughs> a and, virtual uh, hug. Here we go. <laughs> it is my honor to be here chatting with you guys today. Uh, well, we're, I'm super excited. When I first met you, we were in Florida Yep. And you were doing an event with Carl White. I remember I was a mortgage marketing animal member at the time running a loan business in Arizona. He sent out a video talking about the psychology of execution. Mm -hmm. And I still, to this day, I went to Florida and I thought, I can't miss this. I've got to know how to execute. When I got there, you were presenting, Carl was presenting, Frank Array, Brian Stevens, a few people. And it was an event, Roberto, I've told you this a ton of times, but I'm going to say it here because I want the listeners to hear it. That event changed my life. Aww. And in ways that I can't, I still remember so many key things from that event. And it helped me to see that there were possibilities that I wasn't even aware of and how to execute. You helped us to see things from a different perspective. You helped us to go deep on what we really wanted, who we were. Tell us a little bit about what you did during that. Yeah, so the, the event we did, it, one of my favorite uh, events also was the whole idea. I, I want to step back a little bit and, and talk about influence. Yes. Uh, the name of my company is Influenceology. And the reason we developed this name is because I believe that in the end of the day, influence happens in four levels. Number one, when you wake up in the morning, you have to be able to influence yourself into action. Because sometimes we know, for example, a silly example, am I going to work out today or not? Or I'm going to sleep in. All right, so that's an example. I want to pick up the phone and call prospecting today, right? If I'm a loan officer, for example. So the first person that you have to influence your, yourself, the, the second level is influence one-on-one. -on -one. When we talk to people, when you have a conversation with our spouses, our kids, people are like, oh, but I'm pretty good at that. Well, Divorce rate is like almost 50%. So a lot of people, they're not good at communicating one-on-one, -on -one, the, the loved ones, right? And the kids or the clients. So that's level two. Once you're able to influence yourself, then you're going to be able to communicate or influence the person you talk to. The third level is influence groups. That means that, and I, my background, Tony Robbins, where I've done in my career 20 years, over 4,000 talks, you want to have leverage, right? And one of the leverage that you can apply in your business, instead of having a conversation with one person, you have with many people, like you're doing here, recording a podcast. So one-to-many communication or, or group communication, webinar, public speaking events. And then the last one, the last level is legacy. What are you going to leave behind? And the whole idea about the, going back to the event, the psychology of execution, how you get the first part right, influence yourself into action, being clear about your purpose, why you do what you do, your identity. Right? How you define yourself in the context of your work, in the context of your life, your values, what's important to you. Are you experiencing what's important to you? Because a lot of people say, well, I'm clear about my values, but you're actually experiencing them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And we talk about our belief systems, the things that you believe to be true, the things that hold you back, and things that sometimes not, some beliefs, they're not, quote unquote, real but they help become a better leader, better communicator. Then what kind of skills do you have to master to experience that purpose? And then how you can influence the environment. So that, that kind of quote unquote, the framework, we spent three days talking about it. That's why it's so critical for us to be able to execute, not only take action, because in the end of the day, Irene, I feel like if taking action feels like going to the DMV, to renew your license, nobody wants that, right? Like, ah, right. I can't take action, but like, I hate it. That's <laughs> the point. If you're clear about, hey, here's my life's purpose. Here's what's important to me. My, What do I value? Here's how I'm meeting those values. Here's and, and the skills I need to grow, to master my craft. Here's the behaviors, the things, how I'm going to take action. Here's my plan. 
So I feel like if people have clarity, it is easier for them to execute. And that was the gist of the class. Yes. I'm telling you, it changed my life. This was a long time ago and it changed my life, my kids' lives, my husband's life. It was amazing. So you and Carl are the people who have influenced me the most. Oh, I appreciate that. I will be forever grateful to you, Roberto. And since then we've become friends and we know our families and it's just been amazing. But when did you know that you wanted to teach people how to present and how to influence for good? You know... Well, I think the there's a few moments. One moment was when I was uh, living in America and I was in a place where I was super unhappy, where I just had a job. And I remember literally growing up in Brazil, watching soccer players and singers and and telling myself, telling my mom, I want to have that. Not the fame. The that was the purpose. Was like, I feel like people were made, you know, the best soccer players or singers, they're quote unquote made to do that and they work yes. on a craft. And I always envy that. What is what is my thing? And I, I couldn't play soccer. I'm not a good singer, but what was my <laughs> thing? And that really bugged me, Irene, for many years, not knowing and not figuring that out. Mm-hmm. And then I had, I had jobs and because of my work ethic, I did okay. But I was, quote, unquote, achieving some level of success, but not a great level of fulfillment. Mm-hmm. And then I went to this journey. And one of my first seminars, that's why I do seminars. Because the reason I do seminars is because it's a chance for people to stop life, quote, unquote, and focus on themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. And I remember the, with the seminar I went, the last day, they had you write some goals and and I, and I wrote one of my goals was to work for Tony Robbins. Why Tony Robbins? Because I had listened to Tony Robbins CDs and they were very impactful for me through that journey. And I remember, but it was kind of like I wrote that goal, but not really truly believing. And then <laughs> on Sunday, they had this, this group share and I got my mic and started talking. Nobody knew my goals. And a lot of people said, man, when you spoke, move me. You should become a speaker. You should do this. And I'm like, and <laughs> and what is almost like the reality match my goal. And that's like, that's what I'm going to do. So that was one of the reasons. And the, the second reason is because I struggle. People don't know this, but growing up in Brazil, I struggle with Portuguese. And then I in, in Brazil, in high school, we had the option to choose either Spanish or English. And because Brazil is surrounded by Spanish-speaking countries, uh-huh. I told myself, I'll never need English. <laughs> and then I started Spanish. <laughs> and then when I came here, I struggled the language again. And I'm like, and, and it's really, really, really a terrible sensation when you have the desire to help someone but you cannot communicate properly. You cannot communicate in a way they get it. And, I, and I've and been through that situation many times where like the desire is there. It's like, man, I really want to help the person, but I don't know how to communicate effectively. And I think that led me to say, you know what? I want to master this kind of like, I want to overcome the barrier on myself first and then help people. Mm-hmm. And then I realized later on, as I was going through my journey, I started receiving phone calls from people, uh, can you help me in this presentation? Can you help me in this presentation? And I realized that a lot of people out there, they may have some communication skills, but from the people that are attracted to my work, they want to create a movement. They want to leave a dent on the universe. For them, just everybody can speak, quote unquote, but being able to create a movement, to be able to influence someone ethically, to be able to leave a lasting impression to communicate powerfully is a different conversation. So I I love it. And that's what we do now. We work with uh, 45 different industries. And I'm super passionate because every time one of our clients, they go and speak, in a sense, I am them with them, helping them create the impact they want to create. So that's what we do. Yeah. You know, Kevin and I, my husband and I, Kevin, we went to your event 
Yeah. And then we took Kenny, our youngest son, to your event, and he learned how to present. And we learned how to present better. After that, then you came and did one for the Freedom Club. Yeah. And spent two days with the Freedom Club doing an event teaching how to present. And I'll never forget looking around the room and seeing everybody doing video and you were training them and they were getting so much from it and the energy in the room. That's what I love about you, Roberto, is you are very different than a lot of people in the way that you bring your energy and mm-hmm. you come from love. Always mm-hmm. you come from love. And, and I've learned that in your training is that you do come from love. You really do. You love everyone in the room. Yeah. Is, you know, the one uh, I know may sound corny. If you if it is the first time you listen to me, it's like, <laughs> what's the reading arena is talking about coming from love? <laughs> but, uh, but the fact is, here's my blueprint. I believe in America. You have an opportunity to do pretty much anything you want to do. Yes. Right? Legally, you can do pretty much any career, any path. And for me, if you choose something, you got to be able to love what you do. And I love to see people being successful. And I love to be able to see people truly creating influence in their communities. I call the three W's where my clients win, their community wins, right? their clients win, everybody wins, win, win, win. And I feel like, how come you cannot love that when you help someone? And, and people ask me, how can you love someone you don't know? And I have this ritual that I do. I'm going to share here. Okay. I Before my presentations, I always close my eyes. And I, and I started doing this 20 years ago. So was, the first thing that I did, I was just had me and my mom. I had memories of my mom hanging out, my mom traveling. So I had these very loving moments, right? And then later on, I got married. So then I go with my mom, then I add my wife. So I have loving memories of my mom, then my wife. And now I have two beautiful kids, Sophia and Phoenix. I do the same, me playing with them. And then when my body, I really, all I'm doing is visualize right, this happy, loving, amazing memories. And when my body is full of that energy, love, in silent, I go like this. I go, I'm, I'm looking at everybody. I don't care if there's three people, 30, 300, 3,000. I go, I love you. 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 And now I, I, I start feeling my body, the room of love. And I'm like, <laughs> And, and, but I do with everybody. And then eventually becomes this love bubble because with love, you're able to have an honest conversation. I'm not thinking about judgment. Most people think about that person is going to judge me or they're going to ask a question don't know or they won't like me or that conversation does not exist. Mom had, I'm just like, I come from a place of love. I'm going to speak my truth. Some people may not agree, I understand, but that's okay. And then it's such a powerful when you come from that place. And while I don't know them or some people, I know their humanity. Because yes. just like me, guess what? Just like me, they're afraid. They have goals. They have doubts. They want to you know, be more successful in the craft. They want to be able to help more people. They want to be able to spend time with loved ones, right? So I love that humanity, that part of them that I can relate to. Yes. And, and that has been working for us for, for, for many years now. Yeah, it sure has. And that's what I love about your energy. That's why we connected so deeply. Is And those are the people that connect with you, are the people that can connect to helping people, to wanting to improve people's lives, and to do it by influencing them. You teach the skills about how to do that because it takes skill. It's, yeah. You can't just get up there. You can wing it, but it's not going to come out the same way. No, I, I want to I share with you something. I just expand the point. I was talking to someone the other day and I said, I'm, I'm super lucky because of the, the caliber of people you attract. So like we have this class, in. So the last one I did was a month ago in this financial planner from uh, Seattle area. He goes, I cannot believe the quality of people I met here. And I'm like, I know. It's like, I know. It's, it's just, you know what it is? I, I feel like part of it is to become a great communicator, to become a great leader, a great in, uh, a great influencer. Your goals have to be beyond your pocketbook. It has to be beyond your little, yes. your little thing, right? Now, we all want to make a lot of money. We all want to be successful. We all, why? Right? But then... One, and I've been doing this for 20 years. So my sample size is big, I feel. 
And I feel like the best leaders, they wanna, you know, they wanna be successful, obviously, but they they truly feel in their heart of hearts that what they're doing is really helping the, the greater good. And there and there are sacrifices. Like this morning, I was working out. I wake up at 4 a.m. every day, go to the gym, and I was working out and I was writing, I like to write things when I'm doing cardio, and I was writing a couple of things about speaking is a lot of sacrifice to put yourself out there. There's yes. there's a lot. There's sometimes you have to rehearse by yourself. You have to be travel. You have to you when you expose yourself out there, put yourself recording videos, podcast. You the fear of judgment is real. People gonna judge you. So there is quote unquote the bang, the downside of it or the negative side of it. For me, I see it as just that's what comes with the. It's kind of like if you're gonna work out, then your muscles are gonna be sore. Right? Is the same idea. But 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 that's how ultimately I feel every leader again 45 in this, 45 different industries they have this extra and this extra arena is that there's the the legit genuine real desire to do something beyond their pocketbooks beyond their financial stability or their company they want to help more people I totally agree with you. And that's why we got connected through Carl, because that's how he is. Yeah. That's how you are. That's how I am. And everyone that we deal with is that way. They're all about helping people. And like you said, I love those words beyond the pocketbook, mm-hmm. because you want the pocketbook. You want to make of course, money. Of course. Of course. Of course, of course yes. Of course. But it's all about being beyond the pop- pocketbook. And I love that. And the thing about love is I, I love this saying, love is the answer to every question. That's one of my very favorite sayings because love can overcome a lot of things. So Mm -hmm. love is the answer to every question and having that love makes a big difference. Now, my dad was an immigrant. My, my dad came from Mexico city and he taught me that he taught me about love. He didn't read that quote, but he taught me work ethic, how to deal with people and that not everybody's going to like you. You know, he used to Mm -hmm. tell me that not everyone's going to like you, Irene, and that's okay. Just be who you are and be a positive person and help people. He said, that's the best thing you can do. And I'm grateful that he taught me to do that. Oh, and I love that, Irene. I, I, wrote down the, I wrote down the quote. One of my quotes that I use in speaking is this, when you love speaking, speaking loves you back, <laughs> right? I it's love like, that. Because when you're, a, a lot of times when people go through, you know, their careers or coaching groups, or they say, hey, put yourself out there or do a talk or record a video, whatever. And then if you're just doing because, quote unquote, that's you're supposed to be doing, or your coach told you to do it, or you saw someone else to do it, you you won't be able to be, in fact, you've got to be able to love, like, like kind of the act of. So I love it. I love, I, I truly, if I go... You know, a couple of days without speaking or recording videos, I actually crave it because for me, and it's not about me, it's about people, but I love, I, so for me, I, I realized that when you love speaking, speaking loves you back. And I'm not saying that it should be love, you should love being perfect because one thing I can tell you, I'm not perfect. And nobody expects perfection when you communicate. People have a, they want to expect you to be able to help them. It's different. Yes. So many people, they don't record a video, they put themselves out there. Because Irene, they want to be perfect. And the truth is that on my last talk I gave in Michigan two weeks ago, there's a couple, a hundred people in the room. And I asked them, how many of you here, when you came here, you were expecting me to be perfect? I asked this question. Out of a hundred people, no one raised a hand. No one. And I said, how many of you here, you came here for four hours, you expect me to provide value to you? to respect you, to give some ideas. Everybody raise a hand, right? Mm-hmm. So the point I was trying to communicate is this. When you speak, nobody, quote unquote, expect to be perfect. They expect you to be awesome because awesome is a standard that everybody can, can strive to achieve, right? Awesome. What do you mean being awesome? Well, you care, you prepare, you give your best ideas, you show up with energy, you spoke yes. from love. That's being awesome. But yes. I want to make mistakes or you don't have to worry about being perfect. So... Yeah, I love that. One of the things that you taught me and many, many people throughout the years is when you're nervous to get up there and speak, when you're nervous, just remember, it's not about you. It's about Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And in video, the other thing that you taught me is 
you know, don't be worried about what you look like because that's what you look like when you go to the store and exactly. people see you there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We don't think about that when we walk out and go to the store, but for some reason, when the video camera's on, we start thinking about that. So those yeah. are the two things that I remember that are that's really funny. key things. You know, no, super yeah. key. No, a lot of times we get caught up on the small things. Like for me, for example, when I when I, I told the story about when I when I learned that I want to become a speaker, before that, I for many years, Irene, I never took action towards my goals because I didn't want to speak because I had an accent. Mm -hmm. Some people may look at me like, well, but that your accent makes you memorable. People remember you. And I'll yes. be like, okay, I understand that. But the way I felt for many years is because People are going to make fun of me, even though our limitations or limited beliefs, most of them, they're not real, quote unquote, they're mm -hmm. real for us. And then yes. and they actually physically stop us or some of us from taking action. It does. And so how did you get out of that? Did you start just deciding that you were just going to put yourself out there? Or how did you, you know, get Irene, for me, it was uh, for I start getting uncomfortable, more uncomfortable, more uncomfortable. I just became uncomfortable, like not happy you know people change out of pleasure or pain i think for me it was a mix of both one question that always helped me and you heard i think anybody in personal development has has heard this question that question really helped me uh, when the first time i heard it mm -hmm. and i heard it if i could do anything in my life and i knew i could not fail what would i be doing today right here right now and i'm sure everybody re read this question very few people have answered this question truly. For me, it was like, it was a different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And that question, I, I always have like, yeah, why, what is my answer? And I think part of it of like being, having the courage to explore the question or the answers. And number two, not liking what I was mm -hmm. fulfillment wise. I think the combination between towards pleasure, towards the future and away from like, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't just want to have a job and just make, I just, I don't want to, I want to, I know there's more. I can see there's more. Yes. And I think the combination of both helped me break through. And then with the, the training, the coaching, the speaking, I hired a coach too. And eventually I could actually, I, I, I changed the belief system. Mm -hmm. And eventually my new belief system to replace, like before was like, I, I don't want to speak because I have an accent. Uh -huh. That was holding me back. And eventually I changed to every time I open my mouth, magical things happen. I love that. And then I'm like, come on, Roberto. And people, they listen to me like, dude, that's kind of silly. We're like, well, that's my belief. I don't, you don't need to. That's mine. Because, because for me, I look at my calendar. I read, uh, you know, podcasts. I'm excited <laughs> about it. Why ma magical? What do you mean magical? I'm going to connect my friend. I'm going to hang out. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm going to inspire someone here today. It's magical things happen. So for me, it's better than like, well, I'm going to speak today. I read a podcast. I'm afraid some people like me because I have an accent. I can. It's, it's two different realities. And totally. once I change the conversation, the other stuff is just literally gone. It's gone. That is so true. I, I am one that really believes in being intentional about what we say to ourselves. And that's what makes the difference. And your mindset has always been, since I've known you, has always been positive. You're full of energy, full of love, and really wanting to help people. So do you have a, like a routine that you go through uh, mentally to say things to yourself on purpose each day? Or well, I pray. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, uh, I like to pray. Right. I like to ask the question, what do I have to believe in this situation? Love that. Uh, because what do you have to believe about the situation is kind of like a way of me creating uh quote unquote empowering positive beliefs. Mm -hmm. I have this before I, I do I present, I have this kind of like um my I have four things that I do. One, I found a place of confidence, I find a place of love, I, I have a place of empathy. And I have a place of gratitude. So gratitude, love, empathy, certainty. So I just found this state, right? So that's kind of like, it's how I program myself before I present. 
and and I'm a kind of speaker that you, I'm always studying, always studying. I study every day. That makes every a day. big difference, doesn't it? I study. I'm student first. I see myself as students. I'm always reading. I was a book. I was an audio book. My wife actually, when I moved from San Diego to Charleston, South Carolina, I gave away 300 books, oh, and she oh. made promise me that I was like, from now on, I'm just gonna buy ebooks. <laughs> so I had to tell you that I broke the promise. <laughs> I'm not very proud. I mean, not very proud. I try. I had like you no know, those Kindles. I have two or three of those, and I'm like, I just cannot do it. So she understood now. She but does. um, I'm, I, I love. I, I just love. I love studying. I just love studying. And that makes a big difference because you're going to keep honing your craft and get better and better and better. The best leaders are students. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, every leader that I know that has been very successful is also a student at heart. They're always mm -hmm. learning. And so I'm glad you brought that up because that makes a big difference. So the other thing is, you know, in this podcast, we talk about training teams and, and training your people and also training yourself. Yeah. And so- my question for you is in training, how has it made a difference having a team like you and your team? It's critical to have a team, especially my role as a speaker and coach and give advice. I need to get coaching advice as well. So have someone kind of to give the feedback. And the metaphor is, is critical for me, Irene, because the analogy that I like to give is this, you can be the best driver best car, best Huawei, guess what? You're going to have blind spots. And a team that you trust and someone, a coach that work with you or a partner, sometimes can give a, hey, blind spot here, blind spot there, blind spot here, blind spot there. Yes. And to avoid the crash. You can be the best in the world, right? So I think that's the one of the roles of it. I'm grateful. I have a business partner since... Uh, or since we started 2009, Jeff, yeah. you know, I love Jeff. Well, I talked to him more than my wife <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today, right? today, two hours on, the, on, on Zoom planning, planning, <laughs> you know, anyway. Yeah. So it's, it's fun. It's super fun. The, when, when it comes to team training is to have the uh, really important, uh, I want to give a tip here. A lot of times the leader of the team that person has all this expertise, and this is what I've seen in teams. And then when it comes to the team, there's a blockage of communicating the expertise to the team. All right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's yes, kind of like, totally. And and I think it becomes super powerful in when the leader takes the time to start creating a content bank or storytelling database or phrases or methodologies to pass all the uh, beautiful information to the team, right? Yes. Because I realize sometimes, let me give an example. A leader can turn around and, and do a presentation for, uh, let's say in your world, right? You have a loan officer is speaking to real estate agent, let's say, mm -hmm. okay? And the loan officer has this amazing skill, has a story, has a case study, and then later on, uh, the team I uh, hear is talking to different realtors, but the team members, they don't know about that store, the case study. So it is not the, the team's job to go and find it. It's the leader's job to, to pass the information on. It makes total sense. That was a beautiful way to describe it. I was working this sales team. I have a no, uh, NDA, non-disclosure agreement, so I cannot tell the company. But it was a big company, right? The telecom and uh, they are working, they have two sales divisions, East Coast, West Coast. And the West Coast now was trying to get into banking, banking industry. And the sales rep goes, we don't have any stories, in case it's about banking. And here we have the East Coast team, all they did was banking, but they don't talk to each other. Right? Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like, we got to be able to organize the information away that you, as a leader, you get all this content, all this story, all these frameworks, and you put in a way so that you can disseminate that through your team. Yes. Another thing that I've noticed and the reason we started the training, and you've been with us from the beginning, right, Roberto? You helped yeah. me with some coaching. We did some one-on-one -on -one coaching together. And we put the, the team training together because of communication skills. 
some people have never taken a communication skill class. They've never taken a class on process, how to talk to people, what to say, what not to say. You know, all of the things that we teach in our WOW training, that is something that I don't think anybody else had a class like that. And I no, saw- was a- fun time. I'm so proud, by the way, a plug here. You guys have an amazing, amazing training. I'm super proud of uh, all the, the, the impact you created. All the testimonials, I read so many. You guys are doing a phenomenal job, Irene. Truly are. Thank you. Thank you so much. And a lot of that is thankful to you. I'm thankful to you for helping me put it together and figure out exactly what needed to be done in it. And I'm I'm just really grateful because I feel like we are helping loan officers. We're helping companies. We're helping mortgage companies, branch managers. We're helping staff. I had a gal reach out to us after taking our... We have a new training that I haven't probably mentioned to you yet, but it's a loan assistant mortgage training boot camp. And it is to teach them actual how to do mortgages from beginning oh, to nice. end for somebody that's brand new. That's yeah, awesome. Teaches them. And it's online. Kenny and I put it together. I had somebody just take it and reach out to us and just with so much gratitude in her heart that she had been in other professions. And now after taking this, she was grateful to her loan officer and to me and her loan officer came up to us at the Freedom of Club event and told me, what an impact it's made in her life. And that is the stuff that to me, that is what motivates me. It's not It's not about the money. Of course, we love the money, but it's not about that. It's about helping people. I and love so, that. Yeah. And you said stuff is so critical, Irene. And, and sometimes it's hard to communicate that to people. Most people, when they wake up in the morning, entrepreneurs, loan officers, realtors, uh, chiropractors, dentists, executives, they don't wake up in the morning. They don't think about, I have a communication problem. They yes. don't think that. Right? They, that right. is the last thing they're thinking. But I promise you that 99, not all, but 99% of the problems is some type of communication problem. Yes. Right? Because, because like we talk about it, the mindset, for example, the loan process. When you talk to people, when you talk to a consumer, what is that? That's communication process, is specific to the product you're serving, right? Yes. Or the client you're serving. So m- people don't think that way. But I'm. But what I learned is that the vast majority, marketing is a communication problem. Mm-hmm. Offer, offer is a communication problem, right? So the vast majority of the problems that people have in business relates to and in life becomes a communication problem. Mm-hmm. Let me give an example. I have a, I have a silly example. Of my, you gotta be able to communicate differently with people and becoming aware. So on Halloween, so we have we live in a neighborhood here in South Carolina. We love it, and it's very active. The Halloween kids everywhere. Uh-huh. And this year, my wife is very health conscious, so she come up with this thing or learned from somewhere about the witch switch. Have you heard about that? Before? No, no, I haven't. So basically, the witch switch is this: you go into Whole Foods and buy some very organic, good candy. Okay. Like good candy, good, good candy, candy. <laughs> yeah, good candy, right? <laughs> and then you you let your kids go out, and then when you come back with a full of those candies, you say, "Look, I have this beautiful bucket. You can go get one or two, you know, of these candies, and you're gonna sw- and you're gonna switch, right?" And and we did that. We pre framed it right, and everything was working. So my three year old Phoenix, since he got his bucket every day in the morning, I wake him up. Seven o'clock, first words out of his mouth. First, can I have a candy? First words. <laughs> Before good morning, hello, dad. Can I have a candy? And that every day, every day, four or five times a day, every day. And I'm like, I'm getting tired of this. So I said, uh, Phoenix, do you want to know what happens with kids who eat candy all day and don't brush their teeth? He goes, yes. And I went to Google and I typed it up, bad teeth, sugar, I mean, I'm talking about like crazy pictures. So I got my three-year-old, showed the picture, and he was quiet like this. And I said, do you see why Dada doesn't want to be can- eating candy all day? He goes, yeah, I understand. He stopped asking. And I, I was taught I was the communica- communication genius, right, Irene? I'm like, man, I got <laughs> yes. it right. My three-year-old. A <laughs> couple of days later, Sophia, my five-year-old, shows up. She started, I want a candy, I want a candy, I want a candy. And I said, uh, Sophia, do you know what? Do you want to know what happens with kids who eat sugar all day and they brush their teeth? Yes. I put the same picture, Irene. She start 
crying like crazy. My wife mad with me. What have you done to her? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and they'll remind me like, look, we cannot communicate the same way that the, the, the people, they're different. They're different. Yes. They're different. It was my bad. I did. Oh, I that's gotta, funny. This, my, you know, it was my bad. So it's a lesson that the communication, there's always the next level being able to, to read the room. And I didn't do that very well with my daughter. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about raising kids is they're very different, aren't they? What you say. They're very different. Yeah. I heard something on a show the other day that was just amazing to me. And I shared it with my husband, Kevin. I love this. He said oh, he was getting advice from a, a one guy was getting advice from a coworker who's a great father known, you know, known for being the great dad and everything. Great family man. And he says, well, let me tell you something. He says, I have five kids and all five of them have a different father. And the guy looked at him and said, they have a different father? He said, yes, I communicate completely different with each one of my children. Nice. All five of them have a different father. And I went, that's the key. That's exactly what you do as a parent. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So let me ask you this. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back and do things over again, in your business, let's say, mm -hmm. what's one thing that you would do different that you think might help have helped you on your journey the most? Is there something or would you do it the same? I would say all my failures and successes have been uh, positive to me, fail a lot, succeed a lot, had uh, some amazing moments. Had so I know amazing some moments were very challenged for me. I will not change it. I don't want to give an answer here just for give an answer. I like that perfection, but I will not change it. You know, I love the journey, I love the challenges when I look back <laughs> of uh, everything we've done in our businesses. I feel I feel blessed, you know. So uh, there's nothing that I I think everything just helped me to become who I am. I agree. And what we do, what we stand for, I don't think I would change anything. I think because everything was on the right time too. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of things I could have done better. Don't we all, right? Yeah. I think one of the things that I personally, well, okay, let me, yeah, one thing that I think I, I could have done better was when I start speaking in the beginning, I was so focused on speaking in the beginning, so focused on be in front of the people that I was not focused much on marketing, kind of like what happens to the people who are not ready to buy, whatever, to yes. have a good follow-up system, a good email marketing system. I did so that's something that I'll do from the beginning. Answer your question now. I would start earlier. Eventually I corrected. Took me, I don't know, three, four years to correct that. Uh -huh. uh, eventually corrected, thanks to Jeff. Wasn't, you know. But the rest, I feel was it's been a good journey. It's been fun. I mm -hmm. love it. I started the speaking in 2002, so going on 20 years this year. On our for 20, 2002 to 2008, Tony Robbins with our company, 13 years, going 14 years. So we love it. It has been fun. Great, great. Tell us one thing that you're excited about that you're working on right now. One thing that I'm super excited. I spent a Saturday morning. I actually did that for a couple of hours. So I've been doing a class, it's called Influencing from the Front, that Ted, you participated, yes. uh, Carl participated. So I've been doing that class. I am developing the same format. I'm putting an online coaching, group coaching format. So that's, awesome. like, that's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be new, it's gonna be, because most of people, speaking has changed. We have, not only we have the opportunity to do in-person events, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But then we have this, we have podcasts, we have live video, we have membership sites, we have videos, we have... Yes. What I love about it, specifically, uh, there's more opportunity before COVID. Mm -hmm. right? So now I'm taking my class and developing a, uh, a curriculum online. So that is my new project coming out. Hopefully December I finish. So I'm super excited about that. Oh, I love that. That's going to be so great because more people will be able to take advantage mm -hmm. that can't go in person. Mm -hmm. That's going to be amazing. So yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for you, Roberto. Thank you for being such such a great 
influencer for positive and also for being such a great friend and being so full of ideas, being a great coach. You know, I, I from the day I met you, my goal was so that you would coach me someday. Remember, I told oh, you that. I said, yeah, one of these yeah. days, I couldn't I mean, afford it at the time. Very nice. Couldn't afford it at the time, but I knew one day you would be a coach for me at some point in my life. And you have, and I really appreciate it. And you have helped to change not just the my life, but the destiny of my family. And mm. that means more than anything else to me. You could have had me get a better business and all of this stuff. But the thing that really matters to me is how it's changed my family. And oh, I'm so, so grateful. Thank you so much for being me. I, I feel the love. I appreciate that very much. So yes. grateful for you, uh, for your family. So what words of encouragement do you have right now for our loan officers and other business owners in the current times that we're in right now at the end of November in 2022, when things have been a little rougher Mm -hmm. For life in general, with inflation yep. and the mortgage industry where it is right now, what words of encouragement do you have for the loan officers listening? So I've been doing Influenceology now for all these years. So pre-COVID, my business was, so I had events, my own events. Imagine this, I do my own classes. Then I go to speak at people's events. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of my clients, coaching clients, are people who hire me because they wanna they're doing their own events, right? Mm -hmm. And eventually you cannot do public speaking anymore, right? I mean, literally yes. couldn't do it. So that forced me to go online and I start doing three-day events online, virtual. And uh, in the beginning it was rough, a lot of pain trying to learn. Am I able to do three days online, 30 hours? Yes learning technology, the video, the studio, the messaging. In the beginning, was painful, kind of scary. But then by the time we're done, now, and now especially when everything opened again, now I develop a whole new set of skills that allow me to present in Australia, in Europe, in Brazil, yes. everywhere from my house, right? Yes. So in the end of the day, if you really commit to work on your mindset every single day, to work on your message, work on your marketing, work on your systems uh, and become better because the situation always changed. But then by the time it changes, you are better. Like yes. you are better. So when, when the whole thing shut down in the beginning, obviously everybody was scared. In my business specifically, I know the low mortgage business was really good timing for them, but the phone started ringing. Right? Yes. Mine just like went cold and I got to figure that out because we couldn't do events. Yep. So for me, was a, looking back now was a blessing because I learned, uh, with, I developed a whole new set of skills that now we use that I didn't have that before. So if you're a loan officer, if you're a business owner, uh, are you working your messaging? Are you are you you having the same message now that you were two, two years ago? Then it's not going to work. You have a different message. You have a, different examples. You have a different systems. I work with a one loan officer who is crushing it right now, and he's uh he's totally revamped his business model. Not his his business model is different. He's crushing it, like mm -hmm. crushing it. But he has a totally different business model than he had two years ago. Yeah, I mean, literally. So it was like, so are there people now are now crushing this marketplace? Yes. Is it rough? Of course. Mm -hmm. But then every challenging market creates, there's an opportunity right now. And how, what are you doing for your mindset? What are you doing for your skills? Are you, are you deploying new strategies? Yes. Uh, so what are you doing specifically? And we always have control. Sometimes like we uh, the, or everything that's happening outside feels like you're not in control but guess what you are always in control of our actions so you yes. can are you are you better are you are you going to be better i don't know june next year than you are right now how much better how specifically what is your personal growth plan for the next six months one year how are you going to yes. become better mm -hmm. why there's always a choice so that'll yes. be my message and it's an opportunity we're in a market of opportunity right now and the ones that are doing the actions they're going to be mm -hmm. the ones that get ahead. And the ones that are not, are not going to be getting ahead. 
Well, I appreciate you being here, Roberto. Thank you again for everything and for always giving back and for giving to the communities. And I still remember the three wins. Yeah, win, win, win. I remember before that, I used to say, <laughs> win. it's a win, win for everybody. And now I always say, it's a win, win, win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You win, your clients win, your community wins. I love it. Yep. I love everybody it. wins. So, well, we appreciate you all listening to the podcast today. And we appreciate you watching, those of you that are watching on YouTube. And if you enjoyed this today, please share it with some other loan officers that you know and who we would also appreciate a five-star review that'll help other people see it and be able to get benefit that you think could get benefit from it. So, and if you're interested in taking a look at our training classes, we have three of them. We have the WOW training, we have client conversion training, and we have the loan assistant mortgage training bootcamp. So take a look at loanteamtraining.com if you're interested in any of that. And once again, thank you, Roberto, for being here. Thank I have so much. thoroughly enjoyed seeing you. I appreciate it, Irene. Thanks so much. A big hug, big hug of the family. And we talk very soon. Okay, sounds good. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.